Now we're to the LS4 assembly, and this is a modified block. So we are going to go to the booklet, and we have this with all of these pieces in the tip, and then there's these big pieces here, and we've got some curved pieces to worry about as well. So I have these over here, and I have these separated. This is the pieces in the tip, and this is the big pieces. So what we're going to end up doing is a lot of different types of basting. So for this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slice right in this crevice, to almost, almost all the way to the paper, not quite. And then I'm going to do gathering stitch and gathering stitch in separate things. So I'm probably going to come up here and then gather this way and then pull it tight and then baste it back on the paper this way and so on because then I can pull from the center and hopefully not have any issues with undermining the fabric. This inside curve is going to be you're going to clip almost to the paper every so often so that it can then fold over and get glue basted and this is going to be the same as this where you make a slit and gather half of it, gather half of it. Same thing here, inside, inside, clip. This is also, I'm going to do this as a gathering stitch, but it's almost straight enough that you wouldn't have to. But I think in, in the interest of accuracy, I'm going to do this with a gathering stitch as well. And once again, we have clipping inside for this basting and another gathering stitch, clipping here, and then this is straight basting. And this is straight basting as well. I'm going to clip this and then baste these separate. So we got a lot of different things going on in the begin in this main part of the triangle. And then this is straight forward. And all of these are going to go, the tags are going to go up. So I'm going to baste this side first on all of them. So that way when I fold these down, the tags go away. That way it keeps them out of here. And then for these, I'm going to do the smaller sides. I always usually do the smaller sides second, or excuse me, first, but I'm going to do them second because that way my tags will go out into the solid triangles. I really, with all this fabric and all these seams in this little tiny area, I really want to make an effort to make sure that my tags are away. So I need this to be the last basting on each one because that will make all of it go this way. No, no, that's not going to be the last basting. This is going to be the first basting and then this one and then this one. I don't know. This is why I talk through this as I go because we'll see when I actually get there how this is going to work. But I'm going to start over here because this is going to be the most time consuming and the most picky of the entire thing. So I'm going to start down here and work my way up. So I finished basting my first two pieces. I made my notch here and then I gathering stitched this and then and then basted it down, thread basted it down on um, each side after I, I did the straight side first. This one I did this outside edges first and then I did this. Now when I got to here, you want your cut to be exactly at that point like this because this is going to then come in this way and then you see this one on top will then easily come in and lay flat on this way. Otherwise you won't get an, a, a clean crisp point on that. And then I did the same thing here as I did here as the gathering stitch on each end. So I'm going to sew these together now and when I do I need to make sure that this point comes to the very tip. The very tip of each point matches because this comes together at the edge of that thing. So you want to make sure that it's that it's I'm going to force the issue is what I'm trying to say. So that it's very much on the edge of each side. Not too far out and not too far out this way. So I'll start at one end and then come in and tie off and then start at the other end and then meet in the middle. So I've sewn my two pieces together and I made sure that every time there was an intersection that I 
uh, reinforced it on each side considerably in. There was one of these that I that I kind of ripped because it was way too close. This one was way too close to the edge, but um, I tried to fix it as I went along. So that includes this one too. I tried to stitch on each side of it, not anywhere as near, but I want to make an extra stitch to make it just as strong. So I'm going to put this aside for now. And this goes up here and I'm going to base this one so I can then attach it to that piece. So I got one side of this piece basted. Again, I made a, an incision here and then uh, made some small cuts along the way to make the uh, curve better. So, and then I glue basted one side and then the other to make this point here and then just glue basted the rest of this. Now I'm gonna do the gathering stitch basting around this edge. So I've got my piece basted on the other side now when I go to attach this to my other pieces that I've connected, I want to make sure that this extreme edge hits this corner exactly, not past it because this is the edge of my triangle and this is not part of it, but they just got to come in just to meet it right there. So I'm going to line that up and then stitch to about here and then tie off and then line this up on this side the same way and then finish this thing. Um, and the middle should, and I'll make sure that the middle ends up exactly where it should be. So I'll go ahead and attach this portion. So I've attached my piece to the other two. So I'm going to set this up here. And this is the next piece I'm going to work on. I'm going to uh, baste this. This is going to be with the notching. And this is going to be gathering stitch. I don't exactly know how this is going to work, but we're going to find out. So I will get to basting it. So I basted my piece. First thing I did was did this inside corner and then glued it down. And then I did this flat side. And then I decided to do a gathering stitch on this entire side. But what I should have done is notched it just ever so slightly here and here. Because now it's kind of like dimensional. It's like misshapen and you know I'm still going to attach it and it's still going to be fine because by the time I take out the papers it'll be good but yeah so I was able to pull the fabric down relatively much here and there's a little bit of you know but if I didn't want to notch it after I gathered stitch because I would have cut the thread so I would have notched it about halfway I wouldn't do that all the way to the thing but just enough to give it some some pressure release but now I will attach this to here and again we're going to use this point and we're going to line it up. This, this line needs to line up exactly with this line and that, that should be you know kind of an afterthought, the red part. So I'm going to make sure that these lines line up properly and that this point ends up right there and get them attached. So I've attached this next piece and it's not perfect. It's wrinkled and, you know, but um, it's not going to be wrinkled once I take the paper out. It just had to force the issue to get that in there. So I'm going to go on to the next piece, which is this one. But of course, every time you make an error on here, then it's going to compound it here. So hopefully I can smooth it out on this piece, but I'm going to do the notch thing. I'm also going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch right here ish somewhere but right at that point on each side so then I can base this without interfering with this so this is going to be all glue basting it won't have any of the thread basting for the gathering stitch and then I'll attach it to here so I've basted this like I said I would but I've got this flat side here that's going to fit into here and I'm going to do both sides of this before I do the curve because that way I can do both sides and tack them down and get them completely attached and then start in the middle and work my way both ways so I can smooth this out a bit, I hope. So I've attached this piece and I was able to kind of smooth this out a little bit. It's still a little dimensional, but I was able to get that a little better and my corners in there and stuff. So the next piece is this one 
and um, I'm going to take my slit here and then baste these like a straight edge. So now I've attached this piece and this is all sorts of wobbly and dimensional and that's fine because once you put this in its spot and take the papers out it'll flatten right out. So that's why when I, I'd say that you always have to force it into submission even if it's all bend, bendy and stuff. So now we're going to go to the tip which looks like this little spinal column. So um, I'm going to work my way down so that I can make, the, make one row and then attach it to my other pieces. So I'm going to make this row and I'm going to baste the, the, uh, what's now the top of the triangle. So I'm going to baste this first and then these two. And I'm going to baste these and then these two so that these go away and these go away. So I'll get to doing that and then attach them. So I basted my pieces and this is how they should look so that I can put them together right and now I will stitch them together. Now that it's stitched together, I will attach it to my rest of my triangle. Whoops. And then I'm going to make sure I line this up. I've got this attached to my triangle. You see this little notch here means I did not get it in there didn't get this angle quite right, but it's it's close enough where I can fudge it. But I want to make sure that moving forward that I can line this up like I did here on the next row. So the next row is going to be this one up top. Whoops. I really don't want to get these out of order because they're so tiny. Okay, and I'm going to base and sew these together as well. Just like the first one, I've got the second one all assembled and I'm going to attach it to the first one. I've attached this to the other row and now I'm going to go on to the third one. And these outside pieces are getting smaller as I go and I got to make sure that my triangle is still a triangle. I'm going to check, I'm going to put it on the paper and check that in a minute. But I'm going to let me get to uh, baste and sew these together. So I was kind of certain that my triangle was quite misshapen, but I was wrong. So yay, I'm in that. But um, what I did notice is when I put these two rows together, my tags were clashing. So I didn't redo my tags. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to do this last and these first because that way my tag will go towards the white and it won't be in the way of these other white tags here. So I will change my basting for that. I've got this one put together now and my tags are going towards the sides. Now I'm going to attach it to the other ones. So I've attached my third row and we're still doing good on the angle here. So my last row before the tip is this one and the small pieces. And again, I'm going to do my basting this time with this being the last. So one, two, and then three. And these I'm going to do the same as I've been doing. So I've got my pieces basted. That's the top. It's going to go like that. And that's the back of these. They're so tiny. So I will sew them together into my row. So my teeny tiny row is made and I will now attach it to the other ones. So I've added my fourth row and now I'm going to put the tip on and I'm going to again, I'm going to base this last. So one, two, and then three, and then I can attach it. So now I got my tip basted and now I can attach it to the other row. So I've attached my tip and I checked the angle of my triangle against the drawing and it looks good. So now I can call my LS4 triangle complete.